If you don't reach out monthly, you, you know, you're almost... It's a waste of time. You yeah. Well, just not even do it. Yeah, you're, 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 you're regressing. You know, the relationship can actually start regressing. So you, you got them all the way up to you know, the point where they're looking for that social proof and you're providing the social proof and then you get busy and you stop reaching out. That relationship will regress back in a couple of months to who are you again? Yeah. I can see the whole wide world with these two and I can be whoever I want to be because it's my life. Hi, thanks for tuning in for another episode of Ask Spurl CPA. Today we're talking about the stages of cold call prospect development. I have Matt Hammond, Sinesis Financial here, special guest with us here today. Thanks, Matt, for Thank joining you. us. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about Sinesis? Uh, Sinesis is a full spectrum financial advisory firm. Uh, we do everything from financial planning through insurance to portfolio management and private market investments if you're into alternatives. Excellent. Carry right on. So the, you know, talking about the, you know, the cold call prospect development today, the quote that we have here today is from Peter Drucker, wrote 39 business books and he says, nothing happens until someone sells something. It's a pretty good rule of business, I think. So yeah. the statistic that we're, we're looking at today is, you know, 50% of all Canadian small businesses go out of business within five years. And 42% of those entrepreneurs will state that their failure to attract enough customers was one of their primary reasons that they did not succeed at business. And that makes the failure to attract customers as the number one reason that businesses go out of business. So the story that we have here is, you know, business owners, they're, they're trying to bootstrap their business. You know, they don't have either the time or the money that's required to implement automated marketing systems that you know might be something to look at later on down the road but for now they don't have that time or money and, and they tell us they've been trying to reach out to customers and by phone and they're not having any success so Matt what are the questions that you think these business owners should be asking well cold calling can be tough and, and following up on prospects can be tough so how many times on average do people have to call or see an ad before they take action yeah so even if this was just an ad you're running on Facebook or Google or, or anything the average person has to see this ad 4.3 times before they're going to take any action whatsoever so you know an ad that's running conventional you know the the analytics tell us that it's 4.3 times before anyone's really going to take any action on this ad and if you're calling, is it different by phone? Not really. In fact, it might even take more effort. So, you know, the people who, who reach out and they call once, you know, it's one phone call and then they come back and say, oh, it didn't work. Cold calling didn't work. Well, it didn't work because we didn't put enough effort in. So, you know, just like any sort of conventional advertising, you know, if we do cold calling, you're going to have to reach out more than once. And one time is just not going to work. And that first time... Are they going to wonder, who are you? Like, why are you calling me? That's usually the first reaction. Usually phone call number one when you reach out to someone is, who the heck is this guy? You know, you, you are not Coca-Cola, you are not Pepsi, you are some small business that no one's heard of before. And so your prospect has never heard of you. So their first reaction is, who are you? That's what they're going to say the first time. Uh, and that's going to be your first objective is to actually try to educate them on, you know, who you, know, who you are. And then what's the second call? That, uh, that second call that's really going to happen is they're probably going to be annoyed. <laughs> so here is number, this is the part that people don't like is, you know, number one, they're wondering out who you are. Now they found out who you are. You know, the second one is, is they're likely going to be annoyed at you. Um, what do you, what do you do in that situation? You really want to try to add some value. You want to give them something for nothing. Generally, you want to give them a piece of advice that's going to help them. If this is something they don't have to pay for. Um, and if it's not a piece of advice in their business, it could be a gift basket. You can send them a Tim Hortons gift card, um, or it just can be a, you know, a well-written email of something they can use in their business. It could be something completely unrelated. I mean, um, you, you could show something that's working in another, uh, another, uh, another practice in their industry. So, so you're trying to generate curiosity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want, you want to give them something that is val of value, really. So now they know who you are and to get them over that hump of them not liking you, you want to give them something of value. Okay. But once they're curious, how do you get them to trust you? How do you get them to become engaged with you? Well, that's, that's kind of that next step. So usually they're going to go from annoyed to curious and we really want to break down those, those steps. So the first thing that, 
who are you? And the next one they're going to be knowing. And the next one is now they're curious. So now you've got them past that point of who is this person calling me? And now they're curious. And, and, and now we're looking at this could be three phone calls in. So at that point, it's that third phone call that they're actually being, uh, you know, they're actually have that curiosity to wonder, hey, what you're doing really mm -hmm. at that point. So then after you start to build trust, you got to get them to like, you got to get them to want to meet with you or to, to, to be in business with you. Probably even, you know, back up one step before, like once they become curious, there's going to be one more natural you know, reaction that they're going to have in there is now that they're curious, you know, they know who you are and they know what you do. They're actually going to doubt what you do. So, okay. uh, you know, they go from curiosity to anno annoyance or so they go from who are you to, you know, to annoyance to, you know, becoming curious and now it's doubt. Naturally, it's going to be doubt and you're probably going to have to pr provide some sort of proof and it's probably going to be some sort of social proof. So whether that's, you know, another testimonial from another one of your clients or a white paper showing the analytics or, you know, your Google reviews, Google reviews, Google reviews. I was going to say, because you got 30 seconds generally for a cold call at, at most. How are you going to how are you going to build trust or, or provide value in that short of a time? Um, I mean, if you can say, okay, hey, you know, you check us out on Google. We have, you know, we have over yeah. 40 Google reviews, something really quick, really simple. Hey, I'm going to send you over another testimonial from someone over in your in your industry. You know, hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, that sense. that that gets you on board, really. So it's really that you're going to have to overcome that doubt. That's the that's the next the next part, really. So. So how do you, what are some other touch points that you can do after they start to become comfortable with you, after they start to trust and, and like you? You're generally giving them information, right? So it, it's, it's generally, you, it's not always an ask. It's got to be you have to give something of value. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk says it well, it's the jab, 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 right hook. Um, so if all you do is right hook, right hook, right hook, you're never, and you're never going to land anything. So I think that's what a lot of people try and do in cold calls and try and knock it all out at once. Right? <laughs> that's right. You want to get that, the, the appointment and the sale right over the phone the first time. And they, you don't realize that they don't know idea who you are and they're going to go through these natural forms of emotions. So, um, you know, then you, you have to get them to like and trust you. So it's providing that social proof, you know, it's being a personal person. If there's any sort of rapport building that you can get, if you can find out any information about them, uh, business owners love to talk about themselves if you're doing any sort of B2B uh, and people in general. So uh, if you can find a, a point of common interest, you know, that's really going to help, you know, uh, bridge the gap and help them, you know, start to uh, trust and like you really. So when you cut the cord, let's say if there's multiple no responses, what, what should you expect in that situation? Should you expect that? 100%. Do you keep pushing forward? 100%. You're going to expect it. And not only just expect it. Treat it as if it didn't happen. It's not like I tried to reach out to you four times, you didn't get back to me. It's like, no, it just, it just didn't happen. It's like, hey, I'm just reaching out to you. It's almost as if the, the no response didn't happen at all. That's really the way that you perceive now, in that situation. Do you leave voicemails? 100%. All yeah, the time. All the time. Okay. Yeah, leave voicemails. In fact, a lot of times following up by more than one form of communication each and every time. Uh, so a voicemail and an email, a voicemail and a Facebook message, a voicemail and a fax because you'll be the only one who sends a fax <laughs> um, if you really want to get to cut through the noise uh, that can be the that can be the way you'll be the only fax machine though they'll, they'll, they'll probably didn't know if it had ink in it still so um, it's one of the questions people is when when do you stop um, I, I think you need to keep going so now they actually like you and they trust you you got to realize you actually have to keep going at this point in order for them to actually you know, uh, do business with you mm -hmm. or refer to you. Um, so at, at this point, it's not just about them, you know, understanding who you are and becoming comfortable and, you know, eliminating that doubt. Once they do like and trust you, if you stop, you've probably still not got any business. So you really have to continue to reach out after they like and trust mm -hmm. you. So, you know, there's the, the old saying, and it, it sounds kind of harsh, and it's, you know, you continue to reach out until they... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> buy die or cry is uh, is really you know what it what it turns out to right but okay. that's uh you know kind of the one of the ways but you, you really have to continue to reach out after and how often do you reach out like every week multiple times during the week every other week how yeah often? yeah great question so you really want to it, weekly is probably that ideal schedule that can be very difficult in a lot of entrepreneurs lives but you know that weekly is probably the one where if you really want to push the ball down the field as quickly as possible Weekly is probably the way to do it, but I would suggest to you that monthly 
is probably the bare minimum. So if you don't reach out monthly, you, you know, you're almost... You, it's a waste of time. You yeah. as well just not even do it. Yeah, you're, 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 you're regressing. You know, the relationship can actually start regressing. So you, you got them all the way up to you know, the point where they're looking for that social proof and you're providing the social proof and then you get busy and you stop reaching out. That relationship will regress back in a couple of months to who are you again? Yeah. Um, so it really, it, it, it does have to be uh, regular and I would suggest somewhere in between weekly and monthly is probably the sweet spot for most and businesses. How many, how many people do you suggest reaching out to? It depends on your time. So it really does depend on your time, but you have to be realistic on if I put this list, this is a cold prospecting list that I'm going to put together. I don't want more people on that list than I can reach out to every single month. In most businesses, I would suggest that you need at least 100. If you don't have at least 100, it's not really going to be an effective strategy at all. Like you're just not going to have enough data points. Um, but at the same time, you would rather a list of 100 that you can reach out to each and every month than a list of 1,200 that you can reach out to once per year. Um, so you, you, you do have to look at that and you should be really discerning on when you assemble that list. You know, who am I putting on this list? You know, where is my time blocks actually reach out to these people? Can I reach out to them weekly? If not, am I going to reach out to them at least monthly? And is it reasonable before I put 500 people on that list? Do I have time to make 500 phone calls each and every month? Because a lot of times you'd be better off putting fewer people on that list, but reaching out to them more frequently uh, because you're just going to have to get them through all of those uh, stages, you know, the rate right from, you know, they want the first phone call who you are and then the next phone call they're annoyed with you and, and, and we just keep moving them down through the process. So uh, that's really the key. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. So I think that's what we have here today. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, as always, you know, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll, we'll uh, address your comments and possibly use it for content for a future video. Thanks very much.